Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Beg. Today we'll be talking about defibrillation versus cardioversion. So what is defibrillation and what is cardioversion we'll be talking about. So see, defibrillation is a treatment which we give for a life-threatening arrhythmia. So what happens is whenever a patient goes into a cardiac arrest, so initially based on the BLS protocol or ACLS protocol, so whenever we, as, a, as soon as patient is collapsed, we uh, start chest compression. And afterwards, we should connect a patient on defibrillator where we monitor, record, monitor or record the patient ECG rhythm. So based on ECG rhythm, sometimes if it is a shockable rhythm, we will give shock. Otherwise, we will continue with the drugs and the chest compressions. So defibrillation, what does it do? So it actually delivers a fixed dose of current to the heart. So the pads are placed, uh, if it is of two types, monophasic or biphasic. The pads are placed one at the apex of the heart and the other at the base, that is near the sternum of the heart. It uh, delivers a current to the heart and thus it depolarizes a large amount of heart muscles. So what does it do is it uh, completely depolarizes the entire of the heart and thus whatever the arrhythmias or ectopic focus which is there, it completely uh, vanishes away. So that abnormal current is uh, destroyed by this large amount of depolarization and due to which what happens when this depolarization slowly gets uh, gets back to normal then the natural pacemaker that is a sinoatrial node that is SA node takes over and forms the normal sinus rhythm. So this is the pacemaker, this is the mechanism that is that the arrhythmia has to be abolished so that the normal pacemaker can take over as a normal as a natural pacemaker. So if a patient heartbeat is asystole, we do not do shock. We just give a, we continue with the chest compressions. So based on chest compressions, so whenever you do a chest compressions on a cardiac arrest patients, so after that you connect a defibrillator and you look for rhythms. If you see these two rhythms, so this is what is called as ventricular tachycardia. So that is a broad QRS complexes, which is heart rate of more than 100. And this is ventricular fibrillation. So this part, this is a small one which you can see is the ventricular fibrillation. There is a dysregulatory uh, contractions of the ventricle. So if you see these two rhythms, you can give shock. That is called a shockable rhythm. And the amount of shock delivered is 150 to 200 joules. If you're using a biphasic, that is if you use two chest pads. If you use single chest pad, that is 360 joules has to be delivered. In the same patient, if you see this ECG pattern, this is called as asystole. What does asystole mean? There is no movement of the heart. There is no current passing through. There is quite asystole, no contraction of the heart. There's, there is no electrical activity. Here, you cannot give uh, shock. There is no use of giving shock because there is no, no rhythm to be abolished. So only if there is an abnormal rhythm which has to be abolished, we give uh, sh this shocks. Otherwise, there is no need for shock. Another thing is called as pulseless electrical activity. You can see uh, some electrical activity is happening in the heart, but there is no pulse detectable. So this is also pulse electrical activity, where also we cannot give any shock. So now coming over to the topic called as cardioversion. So defibrillator we have talked about now cardioversion. Cardioversion is the one. It's a low energy shock. So it's uh, similar to the mechanism is similar to that. That we give two pads in the biphasic one and delivers a shock, but the amount of shock delivery is very less. Here in these patients are generally much stable than the cardiac arrest patients. So these patients are usually uh, like who are having a lots of tachycardia or some abnormal rhythm, but they're stable. That is stable it means they are conscious or they are conscious. Uh, they are talking the BP may be good or pulse is detectable. So all these relatively stable patients are called, they are uh, managed with a synchronized cardioversion. That is they give low energy shock. So what do you mean by synchronized? So before going to the main topic as synchronized, synchronized generally what they say is that key, all the shock has to be synced to the R wave of the QRS interval. So before going to that, we should uh, go into the topic of synchronization. We should know the actual action potential, what happens in the heart and uh, where does the depolarization occur. See, this is a normal ECG. We're showing P, Q, R, S and P. So normally P denotes the atrial depolarization. There is a atrial contraction part. QRS is the ventricular contraction, the ventricular depolarization. And this is called as a ventricular repolarization or called as relaxation phase. Okay, so here is a phase when the ventricle is starting to relax. So during uh, this uh, action potential, what happens is the my this is a myocardium cell action potential activity where uh, you can see the four that is isoelectric one. So once I mean, this is the baseline resting evident potential, which is normally at around minus ninety. So what happens is that at this place, the sodium starts coming in. When the sodium starts coming in, the positive charge keeps building and thus the depolarization starts. 
whenever there are depolarization starts there is a, some contraction which is starting now contraction of the heart started afterwards what happens is that there is a small uh, downward phase there is potassium channel opens and potassium starts going out so the potassium if potassium start going out the positive will again start going to towards the negative side later on what happens is after the phase one then calcium channel also opens which uh, allows the calcium to go in so calcium is also a positive uh, channel so positive positive balances and thus there is a plateau phase and then the calcium channel this calcium channels closes and the only potassium one dominates so now potassium starts leaking out and this is called as repolarization so this phase from after depolarization from here to here is called as absolute refractive period and the relative refractive so what do you mean by absolute refractive period is that there is no sodium channel open here and this is absolutely refractive that is if you stimulate this uh, stimulate your muscle or myocardium during this phase there cannot be any further contraction generated or further depolarization cannot be generated at this phase but if you develop if you deliver a shock or if you deliver a current or you if you stimulate a heart during this relatively refractive period so this time this can induce a uh, contraction but this may also leads to abnormal arrhythmias why because see here the ventricle has contracted and is trying to relax and before completely relaxing if you deliver another shock or deflin current to give it more stimulation to depolarize or to make it contract so it will contract vigorously or may not contract in synchronized manner or may not contract in a proper manner this may leads to deliver formation of what is called as arrhythmias so here you can see if you correlate with the ecg this is a depolarization phase where the qrs forms qrs also forms around the absolute refractive period and the relative refractive period usually falls in this phase so this is the phase period where the cells are getting ready to contract but before they are actually ready if you give a stimulus it may lead to abnormal contraction or depolarization leading to ventricular fibrillation so there are high chances of vf if you deliver a shock during this phase so that's why if you deliver a shock in a stable patient so cardioversion means your goal is not to uh, stop the heart your goal is to basically uh, restore the normal rhythm so you are trying to change the rhythm so if you deliver the shock over qrs when the ventricles are actually starting to contract in that phase you can actually restore the rhythm but if you are uh, contracting or if you are giving a shock at the t wave the uh, t wave is a part where the ventricles trying to relax so already there is some contraction going on abnormal contraction may happen without proper relaxation so this has to be avoided so that's why we give a synchronized shock what happens is that if you deliver at the top of t it is called as r on t phenomena like at the part of t you have stimulated the heart which leading to abnormal contraction of the heart so almost this is called as ventricular premature contraction so in this ventricular premature contraction can always or any time maximum chances are there that it may progress into abnormal arrhythmias called as ventricular fibrillation as you can see here so that's why it has to be synchronized so synchronization means what what happens is there is nothing but uh, there is a sync button on the the here you can see there is a sync button you can see this is a sync button if you press the sync button uh, you can uh, the machine itself will show some lines over this r1 so whenever you press uh, keep the paddles and press shock so it will give deliver shock after some time because it will not deliver immediately because it has to sync with the r wave so it will detect the r wave and will give shock exactly at that point so there will be no immediate delivery of the shock in synchronous cardiac so after uh, so whenever you place the paddles on the chest so after pressing the shock button you have to wait for one or two seconds so that it sync and then only deliver so if you remove paddles immediately the shock when be delivered in the air it may not be delivered in the chest so that has to be keep an in mind okay synchronization if the shock occurs on the t wave during the polarization it will lead to ventricular fibrillation what are the most common indication for synchronous cardioversion is all the stable patients so we do this only if a patient is hemodynamically unstable so if they have any arrhythmias of atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter or supraventricular tachycardia and if they are hemodynamically unstable that is bp is dropping patient is dyspneic ongoing chest pain patient having syncope or giddiness then you do immediately cardioversion with the shock otherwise if the patient is having this rhythm and if they are stable like bp is maintaining well there are no dyspnea patient is conscious and all you try with drugs and if the drugs fail then you may go into synchronous cardioversion if medication fails this you can see is this irregular irregular rhythm called as atrial fibrillation here you can see is a seesaw pattern that is called as atrial flutter so atrial flutter is also you can give synchronous cardioversion supraventricular tachycardia here you can see there is absence of p wave so qrs then t because p is actually hidden inside the qrs superintendent 
let's uh, now compare uh, defibrillation with cardioversion so defibrillation is the one which we give during emergency that is when the patient having immediately cardiac arrest that time if you give is called as emergency it can be a life saving procedure cardioversion is not a very emergency it is an elective one and planned like you are seeing a uh, atrial fibrillation or anything so if you can try with drugs initially if they are not settling then you can plan and do it properly uh, without uh, proper without any emergency so you can properly sedate the patient and give because the patient is conscious and this is unsynchronized because here the patient is already uh, the heart is already arrested so there is no chances of uh, you have to sink there is no need of sink because the rhythm will be already in the ventricular fibrillation and abnormal beating of the heart is there so there is no possibility of detection of r as well so here always it is unsynchronized here you have to give synchronized to prevent the ventricular fibrillation so synchronization is with the r r wave peak of the r wave defibrillation because the heart is completely stunned is going to stop you give a higher joules a high energy shock that is 150 to 200 joules in the biphasic form uh, that is two paddles uh, low energy is generally 50 to 100 joules so as i already said in defibrillation the shock is immediately delivered in the cardioversion there is a delay in shock delivery why there is delay in shock because when you place the paddles on the chest when you press the shock button it will not deliver immediately it will try to uh, sync sync with the r wave it will find the r wave and will deliver after one or two seconds so that is very important that's why you have to uh, after pressing the button also you have to keep the paddles intact on the chest for at least 3 4 seconds so that it deliver the shock in defibrillation is an emergency no anticoagulation required here anticoagulation may be required like in patients with atrial fibrillation where the atrium is contracting irregularly and the high chances of blood stasis and clot you have to give an ant so maybe just you can give a small dose of uh, heparin or lomaclovid heparin just prior to delivery of shock so anticoagulation can be given defibrillation since it is higher uh, delivery of shock or higher high energy shock more damage to the myocardium and is less damage to the myocardium and it is used in vf vt vt basically the pulseless vt here af svt and vt hope you have liked my videos uh, if you have any doubt you can do it in my comment box if you want this uh, powerpoint presentation i'll upload in that comment box you can open that and uh, read uh, and do subscribe to my youtube channel dr akif beg if you have liked my video do like and share to with your friends thank you